So we're trying to beat the rain today and get a few tasks done. One of the questions we get around here is, how do you accomplish various tasks without a skid steer or a tractor or a front end loader, etc.? So today we're gonna to show you some random tasks that we have to try to accomplish before this storm comes in and how we do it using horsepower or just manpower or whatever other tools we have around the farm. Sometimes it involves being a little creative. Sometimes it's just being resourceful using what's on hand. So follow along. One of the tasks we have to complete today is grading our round pen. We have a new load of Mustangs coming in this week and we wanna add some fresh sand, increase the drainage a little bit. It's kind of a constant job in the location this pen and the, our barn is located. And when we moved into the farm, one of the tools we actually had on hand was a DR power grader. It's been a handy little tool for keeping our driveway graded. We occasionally knock down some clumps in the pasture with it. We do a lot of random stuff. But another thing we found it very useful for is raking up the round pen and just kind of leveling the lumps out. Now, we used to hook it to a horse because we're horse powered after all. But the problem with that is the distance from the horse's nose to the, uh, to the, the grader was so far we couldn't get up against the fence line. So what we found was a little more useful was to use our golf cart. It's able to get a little closer to the fence line since it's shorter and by simply driving a few circles and figure eights we can get this thing nice and leveled out and prepped for a sand base. Well, hello, there's our little cowgirl assistant. Kyla, you wanna say hi? Wave. I like your hat. <laughs> She's watching to make sure we're doing all this correctly. Get down here where we can see your eyeballs. What do you think? There's nothing like the taste of horse hair in the spring. Boy, sitting on this homesteader puts me down below the horses and shedding, that hair just blows at me. Whatever the case, if you watched last week's video, you may remember that we were harrowing our pasture to uh, help expose some soil so that we could overseed. We're gonna do the same thing. I have a section here that we didn't get finished, so we're gonna try to do that really quick and get the seed spread before this rain hits, and that way we can get a good start to our pasture this year and hopefully make some hay. Get up, girls. So uh, people wonder how we do everything without tractors, and we got a load of sand here, probably, uh, what was it, three and a half thousand pounds? Anyway, you just unload it by hand. That's the way they used to do it in the old days. Not very hard. This is cheating. Way to unload a lot of stuff really fast. All right, rake it out, guys. All right. 
Nobody here to reach me name. Oh, I'm gonna pull the truck forward. Let's go, guys. Shaky dingy. I feel like. Go ahead, guys. Rake out that stuff there. Okay. I feel like this is gonna break. Is there enough down there to spread or? No. Not yet. You want We've switched out the implements here. I traded the harrow for the forecart. We finished our harrowing job in the pasture and now I think we've got about 45 minutes till the rain hits. So we're gonna come down here to the track and try to do a quick uh, grading of the track. It tends to build up quite a bit of muck and manure over the winter. So we haven't been able to do anything with the ice and snow. And now that that's finally all thawed out, we're gonna come down here, take off the top layer. That way after the rain, it'll have a chance to start to dry. So, see if we can get a little more cleanup done. Woo. Well, another limitation of the horses is sometimes a you know big clump of hay or something will stack up and they can't get it off the track. So that's where me and a pitchfork come in. These clogs tend to build up around the hay feeding areas and we've got four or five spots around the track we find a pitchfork comes in handy, but still just a couple of extra hands and a pitchfork still saves a lot of money over a skid steer so who needs a gym right yeah We did just a quick trip back and forth a couple times on the track. The spring cleaning is always the messiest because it's built up all the water and mud and runoff. So we tend to break that up over several sessions. As you saw, we definitely didn't get it clean, but at least we made a start so that it can start to dry on the surface a little bit. And after a couple more runs, it'll be back to the way we had it before winter. So it's not too much work, but definitely a little more involved process than using like a skid steer but again you know it boils down to your budget really and instead of having a skid steer that sits around for most of the year we just spend a little extra time working on cleaning things up and it still works and we don't have a big 
$30,000 piece of equipment sitting around unused for most of the year. So that's how we got her done today. So it took us 15 minutes to unload that sand. And then we put this blue tarp because we have thunderstorms coming. And this is our uh, poor man's way of uh, draining that water off the top so it doesn't all soak in the round pen, keeps the round pen nice and dry. It's kind of like the old baseball fields, you know, they roll those tarps out and then after the rain they'd roll them up and that's kind of what we do here when we have big thunderstorms so we don't wash all our sand away. So that's how we do it here, a different way. You got, uh, you got her? Are they detached? Um, I'm checking everything. Hold on. I took the check off so she could drop her head and investigate if she needed to. How about bud strap? Bud strap is off, yes. Okay. All right, make sure you say something to the camera. Yeah, I, when I put that tarp on, I forgot Danielle was out working with the horses, so we'll see if, how they do on tarps. Come on, girl. Oh, that's not bad. Training will pay off. Never been on a tarp before. So another task we've got to get done here for spring is uh, hauling compost and bedding out of our winter chicken coop, which is in the barn, and we're hauling it up here, and we're just going to spread it around our orchard trees, try to drown out a little bit of this grass, and fertilize all, uh, all at the same time. Some of you might have watched when we prep our winter housing for our chickens. We start off with the layer on the bottom of mulch from the power company. When they trim trees, they mulch it all up. We throw it out, we let it compost, and then we lay it on the floor here. And then the chickens are in here all winter. So there's chicken manure, old chicken food, uh, we sometimes throw horse manure in here from the barn. When we clean up the barn floor, we have old hay that's been urinated on and stuff. We'll bring it in here. So it's just a, a mix of different composting materials, uh, different types of manure and wood and hay and straw. And we shovel it out in the springtime in these carts. And this time we're taking it out to the orchard and we're going to put this around the base of the orchard trees to give a little fertilizer for them. So that's how we do it. Now I wish you could be here to smell it. When it composts all winter, most people, most chicken houses really stink, but you know, when it composts all winter, it uh, comes out with just this deep earthy smell. It's a wonderful, clean smell. No ammonia, no sulfur or anything like that. It's just a very clean, earthy smell. I just, I wish the screen could be a scratch and sniff so you could smell this stuff. But anyway, anybody who says that chickens stink aren't taking care of their chickens the right way. So we're basically uh, putting this mulch around the base of the trees over there uh, and then we'll spread it to hopefully out more towards the drip line and give a little fertilizer to these girls.
Rosa. What are you doing? That's not very ladylike. See, this actually has quite a bit of fresh horse manure in it from our tie stalls, but we don't worry about it too much. Horse manure does not have as much nitrogen as cow or poultry manure, so got a little bit more uh, margin of error there for throwing it on fresh, but it's mixed in with a good bit of bedding and other material, so it'll still work. Go, Gab. Well, that wraps it up for today. We managed to get everything done before the thunderstorms came. In fact, that bright sunshine right there is just about to be covered up with some pretty ominous looking clouds over there. Thanks again for joining us for a day in the life at Redgate Farm. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this week's video. Please subscribe if you haven't yet and leave a comment because we read through every single one of them. We'll see you next week.